So our last lesson of the year is about solving quadratic equations, okay? So you're going to be seeing the word solve again. We've seen the word solve a lot in this class. We saw it with single variable equations where we were just solving for x. We saw the word solve when we were doing systems where we found a coordinate pair. But now we're going to be solving quadratic equations. It's actually pretty simple in the method that we're going to do today. We're going to be solving by graphing. Again, that word solving is super important. So we need to make sure we know that's what we're doing. We're solving or we're finding the solutions. All of those things mean for us to find go ahead, the solution to the equation. Okay, so the first thing we have to do with a quadratic is set the quadratic equation equal to zero. Oh snap, we just did this on our warm up, so we should already know how to do this. We're gonna take the quadratic equation in the question. It says, what are the solutions to the equation x squared minus two equal to negative x? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this equation equal to zero. On our warm up, how did we do that? Yeah, so we're going to take that negative x that says equal to on the right side, and we're just going to move it over. Now, why did I put it in the middle? Because, yeah. Because, yeah. Because it's x. X is going in the middle. So we have x squared at the front, x is in the middle, regular numbers called constants at the end. So that means this is actually going to be x squared plus x minus 2 equal to 0. That's good. We want it to say equal to 0. Because now we can take this equation, just like we did on our warm-up, and we can graph it. Desmos and test mode, as well as the yellow calculators, will not graph a quadratic if it doesn't say equal to zero. Now, you do not have to type the equal zero onto Desmos or onto your calculator. In fact, don't. You stop right here before the equal sign, and you type that in. So go ahead on your Desmos right now. I want you to type that in. I want you to see what this quadratic looks like. We're at the point where we've graphed it. In your graph on your screen, where does it cross the x-axis so I can sketch it on my screen? Uh, one and negative two. That's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so if I were to sketch this graph onto my screen, it would look a little something like this. Do you agree? Okay, where we have these places where it crosses the x-axis at negative two and one. I want you to sketch this on here. This is important. Now, before today, what were we always calling this vocabulary right here? The rocks, the x-intercepts, or what else? The roots. Solutions. Wait, aren't we trying to find the solutions to this quadratic? Mm -hmm. Guys, all we're doing is finding the x-intercepts. The solutions are the same things as the x-intercepts. So if we find one of them, we find both of them. Again, finding the solution to a quadratic equation is the same as finding the x-intercepts of the quadratic function. So that means that the solutions to this quadratic are x equal to negative 2 and 1. That's it. You've, you've solved it. You found the, the numbers that we could plug into that quadratic to make it equal to 0. That's it. Are you sure? Uh-huh. 100%. 100%. Wow. If you solve that quadratic for zero, you set it equal to zero, you can graph it. The moment you graph a quadratic, you know so much information about it, including its solutions. It's part of my rocks words. Yeah? Is there no more like 17 more steps? Or is no. No? There's not. There's not 17 no, steps. Not, no. Not like the last time? No, not like the last time. No. This, is, this is it. You're solving a quadratic by graphing it. Its solutions are its x-intercepts, period, every time. Here, I'll prove it to you. Let's go to the back page. We're just going to do some practice problems now. All of them ask me to find the solutions to the equations. Remember, solutions is another word that's part of rocks. So really, when it says find the solutions to almost anything, you're looking for the rocks. Is that already solved? It is already solved. Oh, look at that. So Angel noticed that this one, doesn't it already say equal to zero? Yeah. That's good. We don't have to do any of that extra step at the beginning. So all we have to do now is take this equation and graph it. 
You can do this on the yellow calculator. You can do this on Desmos. You could do it by hand if you really wanted to, but I feel like you don't really want to. Is it single? I mean, not really. You have to plug in points and plot the points. And Is it like last time whenever you showed me how to do it? A little bit, yeah. Okay, where does that graph cross the x-axis? Negative 2 and 11. Negative 2 and 11. Here's what I want you to do today. Because this doesn't have any numbers on it, you can put the numbers wherever you want as long as they're on the correct side of that axis. So negative numbers on the negative side, positive numbers on the positive side. You plot the two points for me, and then you draw either a happy or a sad parabola, depending on if it's happy or sad. And that's all I need you to do. You've got a coordinate point at negative 2, a coordinate point at 11. Well, those are the solutions. x equal to negative 2 and 11. Like, that's it. Those are the solutions. Right? Can you guys do number 2, the one just directly next to it? Yes, you can. This one's for you. Yes, sir. Okay, is this one already set equal to 0? Yes, so we're good to go. We don't have to do any sort of changing here. We go ahead and graph this to find the solution. Where does this graph cross the x-axis? Negative 6. Negative 6 and? 5. So this is where it crosses the x-axis. Those are my rocks. So I, got, I have my little parabola here. And I know that the solutions are x equal to negative 6 and 5. Yeah, we're just graphing it to solve it. You can graph it by hand, you can graph it in yellow calculators, but I know you'll choose to graph it on Desmos, so that's what we're going to practice. Not too bad, right? Those are the solutions. Remember, that's the word we're looking for here, solutions. Okay, this third one right here, can I graph it immediately? No. No, and I want you to try it real quick. Try just graphing it the way you see it right now, just so I can prove to you why we have to do this step. So type it in and tell me what, what happens on your screen. This plus was giving me what's, what's it giving you? The little error. It's giving you a little error. If you put it just like you see it on the screen, it's giving you an error <laughs> that's going to say implicit equations are not allowed to be graphed on test mode or something like that. Yeah. That's because it's not set equal to zero. So we have to set it equal to zero to be able to graph. But no big deal. We just practiced this. When I move this negative 2 over, what does it become? Positive 2. And why am I putting it at the back and not in the middle? Because you have to. Because cause why? Yeah, Which it format is it in when you put it that way? 17. 17. It's called standard form. Remember, it goes from biggest to smallest exponent with the regular number at the back. 2 is a regular number, so it goes at the back. But now that I've done this, I can graph it. Where does this graph cross the x-axis? 0 0.5 and 2. So right here, 0 0.5 and 2. Oh, they're both positive. Is that a problem? No, it's, it's okay. They can both be positive. Ain't no thing. So we have x equal to 0 0.5 or a half. That's the same thing. And 2. All right, this last one with me before you guys finish this page. Do we need to set this equal to zero? Yeah. yeah. Where does this five go? In the middle or at the end? Middle. The end. It's a regular number. And so if you move it to standard form, it needs to be at the end. When I move it over, is it going to be positive or negative? negative? Negative. Fabulous. Okay. There you go. I now have my quadratic that I can graph. Go for it. You're graphing it onto Desmos. Okay, sorry, let's go back to this one. Where did this one cross the x-axis? This is the fourth one. Uh, negative 0 0.5 and 2.5. Again, just because there's no numbers on here, I can plot those wherever I want as long as I label them. It's just a sketch of the graph so that we know that the x-intercepts or the solutions are at negative 0 0.5 and 2.5. Okay, you've got the rest of the paper. I did have a really good question a second ago, and there's not an example on this paper where this happened, so before I really let you go, I want to show you something. Let's say this is what your parabola looks like. Where does it cross the x-axis? It, it doesn't. So does it have a solution? No. no, so you'd call that no solution. 
You won't see an example like that on this paper, but I, that was a really good question, so thank you for asking it. Okay, you guys can finish the rest of it, though. You've got four problems on your own. Don't leave your star partner behind, so make sure you check in on them as you're working. Are there any final questions before we move on for today? No, I'll give everybody a few more minutes to finish up. Again, don't just copy it down. Check your work. You do the problem first, then look to see if you got it right.